Hi. In this video, I will show you how to prepare uh, the look development of an asset to use in the Alambic Guerrilla Render workflow. First, uh, we will prepare a simple asset, uh, which is an animated teapot. So, first, we will prepare its look development and reference later its look development inside a, ch a shot project. So, at the beginning we remove the render pass from the default project because we don't need it in the look development project. Then we reference the Salambic model, which is a static model of our asset. At this point we don't need any prefix for this asset, so we uncheck the prefix checkbox and then click uh, create. Here we have our simple asset ready for look development. Let's start the look development of our teapot. All the work we'll do uh, on our asset will be stored in this render graph, the main render graph of the look development project. All the work we'll do in this asset will be contained within the render graph. Right now in this render graph we have the default setup which applies a surface shader to all objects, uh, then assigns uh, trace sets, light sets and layers to all objects. The light linking, trace linking and layer linking will be done later in the short render graph. So right now we will just remove them and focus on the look of the asset in this render graph. We still need some element before working uh, on the look dev. We need a turnaround camera, a uh, turnaround render pass and a light rig to validate the look of our teapot here. We, we've prepared uh, a project with all those elements called turnaround. You can find it in the Guerrilla Render Sample Alambic Workflow directory. Let's take a look. It includes a light rig composed of two distant lights and a gradient light used as a fill light. We also have a camera and a render pass ready to render our turnaround. So let's reference this turnaround project uh, in our look development project by a drag and, drag and drop. We simply press no to create a reference and we keep the prefix here. So we have here the render graph, the render pass and our light rig. We are ready to render this teapot. One last thing to do is to turn the camera as the main camera for this project. And we are render, ready to render our first teapot. Now uh, let's work uh, the look dev of the teapot. So we will do our work in the main render graph. Let's start uh, by adding an attribute node uh, that will let us uh, change the subdivision and the smooth of, uh, of the teapot. So for instance, uh, you can change the subdivision attribute to 3 and check it uh, smooth. And now we'll work uh, on the shader. We put a, a red diffuse color and turn on the two speculars of the surface shader, the specular 2 and specular 1. And we add some absorption on the second specular layer. Here we are. We can now save our look development project. We simply rename it with the name of the asset. So here it is teapot. Let's do now our turnaround animation. We want now to rotate this asset on those 50 frames. In order to do that, we'll animate the root node of the asset. 
The root node is the geom node, it's a transform node. Then we go uh, into transform, transform stack, and we add a Euler transform node onto the stack. This Euler node has a scale, rotate, and translate attributes. We animate the rotate Y attribute. When we press the A button, we create a curve which animates this uh, attribute. Then we simply go to the end of the animation and create another key with 360 degrees. That's it. We have a turnaround camera. Uh, we have turnaround animation, sorry. Let's check it works. You can notice we don't have motion blur here because we previously disabled the motion blur in the turnaround render pass. We turn off the uh, animation motion blur attribute. Let's check another frame. We can ren now render our turnaround to send our asset to validation. To do that, we go uh, to the passes view, where we have this button with two modes, the batch mode and the farm mode. We can choose to render our friends on this computer uh, using batch or in frame mode using the render farm. Here is the batch window rendering all the frames. Before we can use this look development project in a shot project, we still have some work to do. Uh, we have a lot of nodes in this project. We have the turnaround setup with the camera, the render pass, uh, the, the rig, and we have the static model of the teapot. We want to remove those objects in the final shot project. We don't need them in the final assembly. We have a simple trick to do that in uh, Guerrilla. In Guerrilla, every node has this uh, referenceable attribute. By turning this attribute off, the node and all its children uh, nodes won't appear when the project is referenced. So we'll turn off the turn around reference nodes to be sure it won't be loaded in the shot project when the look development will be referenced. We'll do the same with the static geometry of the teapot. We don't need it because its final geometry will come with the shot animation. Let's, reference, let's reference this look development in a fresh new project to see what happens. We simply drag and drop our new look development project. We create a ref reference with a prefix. We get a reference on the tip of look development. We simply get the render graph node prefixed with its name containing the look development of the teapot. Our look development project for this teapot is now ready to be referenced uh, inside a shot project. Everything you saw in this video is scriptable in Python using the regular Python SDK. In the next video, you will see how to assemble the different elements of a shot project, the camera, the animation, and the look developments.